Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're going to be looking at the podium infographic. And we have our canvas is going to be slightly different this time, 1700 by 1200. We have our colors on the right hand side, there are icons and there are and there is fonts for you to be able to get and you'll get that all inside of the blog post. We also have the canvas which has a slight radio gradient on it, white to a light grey which is a value of, which is um, a, is a tint of this blue down here, good. And we also have two bars on the top and this right here which I just have for reference but you don't really need to have that. And all I did to that is just hold control and clicked with my Bezier tool that you can select B to get or you can find it in your toolbox right here. And I think this is about going to finish stroke, the width, I think it's about 25, 25. And that's how I got that right there. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So I'm going to go to Lips tool, create a circle. It's already in the blue that I wanted. And this, I would really pick this blue right here. I'm going to increase its opacity. Then I'm just going to zoom it up a bit. This looks good. And I carry it down a bit too. And I'm going to duplicate this, carry it down. Then I'm going to go to the Snap tool. And I'm going to make sure that your snap edge is the bounding box is selected, snap to path is selected, and snap to cost nodes including rectangles is selected. Then we're going to create a rectangle, come here, see the handle to path shows up, we're going to click to drag, good, and we want it to snap right here. Then we're going to select this rectangle that we just created, put in different colors so that we can see, select the second circle that we duplicated with Ctrl and D, we're going to hold Ctrl Shift and plus sign and that will join them together in union or you can go to path on union right here. Good. I'm going to bring this down slightly so this circle is above. You can't see it right now but you can see the circle is above with the hierarchical tools up here and we are going to add a radio gradient to this right here so i'm going to go to gradient tool so make sure that radio is selected or epilytic or circle good and then we're just going to take off our snap tool and we're going to drag down click and drag down so we're going to change this outer node Holding D, select it, and we're going to click this blue. The middle node, we're going to go to Fill, and your Fill and Stroke die block is Control Shift and F, or you can go to Object Fill and Stroke, or you can right click and go to Fill and Stroke. Good, and then we want this to be more of a blue. Good, and we're going to carry down the lightness of this blue. I'm going to stretch it out. Good, this looks really good. Then on this one, I'm gonna give this a radial gradient as well. I'm gonna press G. You can go down to the drop tool down here, it says gradient. And we're gonna pull out. This is a very gradient heavy tutorial. I'm gonna select this blue on the outside. Good. And stretch it out somewhat. Excellent. Then we're gonna duplicate this circle. Duplicate another one drop it underneath, give that a color that's opposite to what we have drag it down, drag it down and then we're going to select the two of these two and we want these to have a difference value you can bring this down a bit more and we want these two to have to be differenced so you're going to go to path and difference or you can press control and the minus sign so we have this here, we're going to go to a dropper tool with D and come down here, go to dropper tool and we're going to select the outer green 
and make it lighter in a hue saturation and lightness dialog box and we have our podium and I'm going to select the two top nodes double click go to nodes so the two top hold control drag down good then you're going to drag down this circle so you got them here I'm going to select all of them and duplicate them one two duplicate one down here one and two and we're basically just going to change the colors of each one of these right now Ooh, they look nice good so i'm going to go to the next one which i think is the color blue i'm going to select this blue going through the gradient again make sure the outside color is these colors down here and then we're going to make this in fact let's make it the same blue so we know where the starting point is on the outside now i'm going to make darker and we're going to carry it more to the blue side oopsie get more to the blue side of things about here you can even lighten this up a bit but here now i'm going to do the same select this outer blue for the middle good set the blue that we did have before Good. Then I'm gonna select this blue here and make it lighter. And that looks great. In fact, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete these middle ones. Good. And then I'm going to double click this, select the nodes and increase the size. I'm gonna lift them up. I know this is something that my knowing always tells me to do, my friend, and I'm just gonna do it now because I really should. I'll hold Control Shift and L to go to layers. I'm going to add layer two. Then I'm gonna select everything apart from the background, and I'll press Control and X. I'm gonna go to layer two and to paste everything back to where you for where you cut it, you're just gonna hold Control Alt and V, and it pastes in the same place for where we cut it. And now they're on separate the backgrounds on a separate layer. And I'm just gonna lock the background here because I, I'm not really gonna be using it, so I don't have to be selecting it all the time. Good. So right here now. I'm gonna select you two, carry this up, duplicate it with Control and D, carry this up. I'm gonna give this one the orange now, or the yellow, more like, and the beautiful gold. I'm press Control Shift and F, and I'm gonna make this more on the orange side and darken it. I'm gonna do the same with this one now. Let's select this dark orange and this beautiful yellow that we have. Stretch it out. Great. Then I'm going to select this same yellow, which almost has the color that we need already. Good. And it comes out quite nicely. So we're just going through and repeating the process. I'm going to change this color also. This is the red. This will be the second last one. G to go to gradient, select this node, I'm gonna select the red, select the red again. I'm gonna carry this red down a bit, darken it a little, even stretch it out a bit, Let's give it a bit more darkness here. Great, okay, up at top, I'm gonna do the similar thing, select the red for the middle, and then carry down the red for the outside. You know, and you can you carry this up. So we have these colors. I'm gonna select this red right here and um, make it slightly lighter. That's good. We have the red. 
last going to move on to the neon green just going to select this green oopsie select this node right here select the green again bring the green closer to the middle closer to the middle right, let's green the outside green closer to the middle and so it's good then I'm going to do the same here select the outside green in fact let's select the green down here make this green the outside green bring it down bring it closer in let's add a bit more to it a bit more depth great I'm going to select this green here make it slightly lighter good so we have all our colors here looking very nice all our podiums Good. and now we're going to move on to the shadows so for creating this this is sort of realistic so we're going to create some realistic shattering first we're going to create a drop shadow and i'm going to use this blue right here bring, bring it down slightly and i'm going to drop it to the bottom but above this good so when doing shadows like this, object tends to have two shadows. It has an immediate drop shadow and has a fall off shadow according to where the light is shining. So we're going to do the drop shadow right now. Let's blur it out a little bit. This looks actually pretty good. I'm not going to change this any further. Good. So this is the immediate drop shadow. Now we're going to do the blur out shadow. And I'm just going to get this. I'm going to duplicate it grab these two nodes and stretch them out a bit then I'm going to rotate selecting this dark color again I'm going to rotate it a little bit to get it sort of meeting at the corner about here seems good and drop it underneath we want this kind of circular end, that's why I copied the base of the cylinder. And it's looking okay. What we want now is to add a gradient to this. G, and a gradient. Click, drag out. Oops, I'm going to make sure it's a linear gradient. Make sure that's selected. I'm going to drag out. Good. Just going to drag out to get this circle look. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. And then we're going to blur this out a little bit. Mm -hmm. For 3.5 looks good. So right now, I'm going to select the two, the drop shadow, as well as the fall of shadow, come here. Now, but based on the way that we did our gradient, we know that light's coming from this direction. The middle is lighter, edge is darker, this edge is darker, and this edge is lighter. I'm going to go and just, whoopsie. Go and just copy, uh, paste all of them there. And just drop them all in the right place. Now I'm dropping it kind of roughly, but you know, when you're doing this, then you can drop it as accurately as possible to get the best effect. But because I have a tutorial and I'm strapped for time, I'll just drop it like this. Good. so we have everything with our shadows and you can if you want make these ones much longer you know but it's not a prerequisite got all our shadows going on right here this is great so all we need now is our icons and our text so we're gonna move into our icons I'm just gonna draw from these Uh, 
copy them and just drag them up and you're gonna go control and V let's size them up a bit good then I'm gonna move this up okay I could got them size to the right size Right, and then we're going to create the reflection effect that we see in our preview that has a bit of dynamicness to uh, a bit of beauty and realism to <laughs> our infographic so all you have to do for this effect is duplicate invert go to press G gradient make sure linear is selected click and drag down drag this up slightly and then we have the effect that makes it look like it's reflecting it on our podium so I'm going to duplicate this rotate it go to gradient drag down and I'm going to drag this up good I'm going to apply the same for this duplicate Let's save that invert this one I'm just going to take off this right here the handle on the reflection drag this to the middle slightly select that G drag down and drag up and then I'm going to duplicate this rotate it okay upon rotating G and drag down drag this second handle up drag this, ha this first handle up a bit more and we have this and lastly but not least let's just move this to the middle hmm. lastly but not least we have our landscape duplicate this invert Go to our gradient tool, drag it down, and then lift this up so we know what's happening. Drag this up a bit. Great, so all our icons are done. You can get these icons to download as well as the font. So let's add our text. all of this whoops good I'm gonna paste them zoom in to see what we're doing and I'm gonna zoom in a bit more whoops it looks like I didn't copy everything that's okay I can adjust that later on let's get the colors and drag them down and get your text Saw this effect on Ivanto, Ivato, and I absolutely loved it. Saw this type of infographic, and so I was going to do a tutorial on this one. Really nice, looks so modern and so polished. Really looks good, and it's actually quite simple to do. Good. So next, just gonna grab this small text, this last one. Also, I'm not sure if I've ever shown you this, but the gibberish or the text that I have inside it, the placeholder text, it's what they call Lib Lorian Ipsum, and Inkscape is able to generate it. Once you open up a text box, you're going to go over to your extensions, text, and Lorian Ipsum, and then you'll be able to decide how many paragraphs, how many sentences per paragraph, and so. And that's great for your place filler if you're doing mock-ups a lot like me good so I'm gonna add the logo and then type the heading and the text that I'm using is my chroma also in the blog post I think it's podium infographic and it's going to extend this out 
All right, and here it is. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a fun, quick tutorial how to create this nice, realistic and modern effect. I do hope you learned something from it. Don't be afraid to ask any questions if you have any. I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Also, make sure you check the blog post to get your free icons, your free color scheme and use the color schemes. You know, I know persons have problems with them, with the color schemes. So I have a whole list range of color schemes that you can use with the hexadecimal value. And once you get the hex value, you can go down into your fill and stroke and you paste it right here. Just make sure that you add the two Fs at the end because Inkscape uses the two Fs to determine the alpha value right here of the color and if we bring it up and down you notice that the last two characters are moving so you want to make them double f to make sure that you can see them see it with full transparency if you don't want to see it with full transparency or full alpha you know then you can adjust this also okay then so you make sure you take care of yourselves until i see you again but until then Get up and design a new dawn. Later.